Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. You've seen our next guest in next Friday, Friday after next, and the award-winning and the Oscar award-winning film Ray. Please welcome actor and producer Mr. Clifton Powell. Woo! How are you? How are you? Doing well. How are you? <laughs> I look sharp. Thank you. You look nice too. Good seeing you. Right now. How are you, darling? Good Amazing. To see you. Amazing. Have a oh. seat. Why don't you? Oh my goodness. Woo. How's everybody? Hi. Everybody's good. Great. You looking nice. Great. You came I'm trying, trying now, to keep it together. I was confused. You came and you, oh, you right. couldn't see the light. What well, was happening? Uh, well, we're going to make it do what it do, baby. <laughs> Lord have mercy. No, man. When you, when you mention iconic films and yes. you say something like, uh, Ray and Jamie Foxx, it was amazing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, one of the questions was, do I know these roles are going to become iconic? And I, you know, I really don't. I mean, it's just, um, you know, a blessing. Mm -hmm. You know, Jamie picked me to be in Ray with him and wow. then fought for me to be in Ray. Wow. You know, so it's just, uh, it's just all a blessing. Wow, those roles are iconic, as mm -hmm. are you. And you've managed to be in this business for an exceptionally long time. Almost 20 years. And yet, you've managed to not be typecasted. We never see you again <laughs> in the same role. I mean, unless it's like Friday. But so how, how have you gotten from being typecasted in Hollywood? Well, I, I think um, there's some, you know, if you go on IG, uh, in some blog, blog, one blogger said the other day, Clifton Powell has never played any character that has any value to the African-American community. So, you know, it's a How very... How did that make you feel when you well, were Well, you know, I think, I think what people don't understand is that, um, you know, we are people. We have feelings. I have feelings. Yes. Um, and, and then you get, well, he's always the bad guy, but do, the, do you do that to De Niro, Pacino, and those guys? Mm. You, people have to understand we're trained actors. I'm a yes. character actor. Yes. I don't <laughs> beat people up in my personal life. So. I've been able to, um, because I didn't have a plan when I first got to Hollywood, I had a, I had a chance to kind of morph into, in, in and out of characters, and because I'm a character actor, you know, um, but I've, to me, I've been typecast, mm -hmm. because everybody that sees me always thinks I'm the bad guy. I play more good guys than bad guys. It's just that when you do, do you a character- Do you do the good guys? Really? Do you do the bad guys real That's good, me as though. Dr. King right there. That yeah, that's you, he's you a, can't, a good You can't guy. be a better good guy than Dr. King. Yes, yeah, that's true. Yes. Um, you know what it is, Cuddy, once I did Cuddy, um, and just so people understand, mm -hmm. Cuddy, they didn't have me in mind for Cuddy. But I, I, we don't have time for me to tell the whole story. Right. Maybe one day we'll come back and I'll break it all down. Please. They brought me in for uh, Cowboy and Spider. Spider had a half a line and Cowboy. And I asked if I could read for Cuddy. Oh, wow. Because when I read the script, Cuddy had the most meat to it. Mm. So it's not like I came in and said, hey, I'm a tough guy, let me play Cuddy. I mean, wow. you've <laughs> been in more than 100 movies, yes. you've acted in them. I mean, that's huge. People don't see their in, that in their entire career, yeah, well, they what, don't. What people don't see out there is the 20 years of unemployment. Um, oh, all wow. the jobs that mm -hmm. I did, um, all the training that I've done. Um, when I first started at Emerson, uh, this is how I sounded. I took four years of speech classes. I had a gap here, 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 and here. I, I remember I'd, I'd show my first uh, resume and picture, and one of my professors threw it back at me. One of my really? friends who was wow. in the business. So, you know, when I first got to Emerson, this is how I said, hi, my name is Clifton Powell. Um, no, I want to be an actor. <laughs> uh, and <laughs> I, think, I think that Emerson is the place I'm going to be to do it. Oh, wow. And my speech teacher, Dr. Cornell, God rest his soul, worked with me for four years. That's amazing. Four years. And so, you know, the work that I'm doing now is this, I, I think is a blessing because I put in, mm -hmm. you know, 20 years and I've had all kinds of jobs, I think, other than a police officer and an undertaker. Mm -hmm. in, including Reverend Holt <laughs> and, and Black Lightning. <laughs> my man, I, I, can I just say to everybody out there, mm -hmm. I so want people to tune in and watch yeah. Black Lightning. I never imagined in my day that we would have an uh, African-American superhero show, that we would have a panther, that we would have an mm -hmm. empire, or uh, any of uh, Queen Sugar, or mm -hmm. any Saints and Sinners, or Greenleaf, all the shows that we have wow. now. And it's such an honor to be how, playing. How uh, do you Reverend decipher Hope. what roles you're going to take, Clifton? Um, you know, it, it really is, it, it, at this point in my career, mm -hmm. I feel, you know, at when I'm almost 64, so I'm mm -hmm. winding down. And, and, and so scripts don't come in like they used to. Okay. Uh, I'm doing Saints and Sinners. So I've been on Saints and Sinners for four years, right. which doesn't really give me a lot of room to do other stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so when some scripts come in, I've had to turn them down. 
uh, because I'm on Saints and Sinners and they're in first position, but Black Lightning kind of found a little pocket ah, in there. That's cool. You know, so, you know, but again, like the movie that we're going to talk about, mm -hmm. it, I, I came out of the inner city. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be a football player. My mother died very tragically when I was young. My father was a functioning alcoholic mm -hmm. who raised me, and I was raising myself at seven. And after football, I had no desire to be anything mm -hmm. other than I was going to be a bus driver. Guy, oh, wow. Bus drivers made $6.50 an hour back in 72. So I never had a plan. So when young men like this come to me, they have a movie, I, I'm, I'm, I believe, you know, I have a, 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 a moral obligation to reach Absolutely. back and share. Let's you know? talk about Jug Gone Wrong. <laughs> Give us a little bit about the movie. Uh, jug Gone Wrong. First of all, we got to tell people what a jug is. Yes. Is that your question, too? Yes, I would well, like to know. Well, a jug is when you're trying to do some illegal stuff. And a you, scam. A, it's a scam. <laughs> That's what it is. A scam. <laughs> Gone wrong. Uh -huh. But yes. you know the new millennials, they don't say scam anymore. They say jug. So it's jug. it's about a it's about a guy, my uh, older gentleman like myself, who's a pharmacist uh. in the hood. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not gonna say anything, but I know a pharmacist like this out of New York, you know, who who kinda has, you know, people in the hood that don't have health care and all that stuff. You can go to him and get your medicines and stuff. So, so he's kind of like a Robin Hood of the pharmacy. I'm a kind of like a Robin Hood of the pharmacy, but I'm right within the bounds of legality. Oh, all you right. understand? Well, we're going to have to Robin Hood you and, ha and steal you back for another segment, so, for another day. Because mm -hmm. we uh, thank you so much for joining us. We yeah. really honestly do. Please and be celebrate. sure to check out Jug Gone Wrong right now on Amazon, iTunes, or Google Play. Yes. Okay.